Reminded me we got to get some more uh, cardboard boxes. Why is this guy wearing a TV screen around his neck? Man, that's the weirdest damn thing. this guy wearing like a, a computer monitor around his his neck damnedest thing I've ever seen hello North hello North Carolina just in case you didn't hear me the first time good evening Noreen thank you for sending me that yeah everything is kind of uh, falling into place isn't it It's not even a computer it's just like a it's like an iPad cover screen it's not even a, it's, it's a hell of a thing hey Cali Mo damn how many people have you ever seen wear an iPad screen around their neck like a necklace I'm a little beat up tonight. Moving, 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 moving. I 
got some more tomorrow and a little bit Saturday, and I will have fulfilled my obligation. Hey, Catherine. Lots of crazy. We're going to tear into all of it today because I've never... I think I got more messages this afternoon than in any time in the eight and a half years on the channel here. Dave Diaz, welcome to the chat for the very first time ever. Keep a special eye on you. It's very talkative today. talk about that in a little bit, Bob D. Do I think there will be World War? Yes. Do I think it will happen in the next uh, uh, next few years? No, I don't think it will. Yes, yeah, Shemay has Bible study tonight. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, usually the consequences of war are severe, so uh, it really has to be a push comes to shove kind of deal. It takes a lot of, well, we'll review what happened before. My new favorite parking here. I don't have to worry about hitting anything. Oh, and I get a good view of the action. The yeah, unemployment is going to be surging here. All right, unemployment's always your most lagging uh, set of series of numbers. All right, here we are. Oh, hey, Dave, how are you? Let's start with let's start with economic stress and the war, okay? Because that was, um, of course, they're going to back Putin's actions. Birds of a feather flock together, but saying so and doing so, China is one of those nations. You've got to watch what they do, not what they say. And if you ever believe that China would go to war for somebody else's country, you got another thing coming. Okay, they're not—they're not designed that way. All right, they have a country that's defined by borders, of which they believe that Taiwan is part of it, which is debatable and probably wrong. But they might give lip service to what's going on outside of China, but they ain't going to commit it freaking dime uh, unless they feel like their interests are directly threatened which at the current time they're not because they've got their own uh, basket case of uh, they got their own shit going on what's up blondie when the great depression hit after a period of exact of irrational exuberance in 1929 and it was triggered uh you know by late 29 early 30 people thought it was just a correction and it would be over little did they realize that it would usher in 10 years of agony in the united states to probably the most miserable decade hey julie in the history of, of the world short of war and things like that how you doing cass what really made it difficult was as business, hey, Kit and Cat, as business receded and declined, 1929, 1930, 1931, it kept declining until the gross domestic product of the United States had been cut in half. What do you think of the nuclear? We're going to get to that. Uh, no, it's just smoke and mirrors bullshit, you know. 
during that period though, people had the memory in their head of the fat times, right? The roaring 20s, how great it was, how easy money was, how you could buy a car on installment credit, or you could buy a radio, or you could buy a, a newfangled vacuum cleaner or washing machines. All these new innovations. And then just when people were feeling great and Herbert Hoover came out in his inaugural address in, in early 1929 and said how great it was that we have beaten the forces of poverty and um, we've tamed economics. Well, famous last words, right? By the time the election of November of 1932 came, Hoover lost in the biggest landslide in American history, despite coming in on one of the biggest landslides, because economics underlies everything. It underlies politics. It underlies the success of failure of democracies, of dictatorships. But as things started to go down in the 1930s, and Germany, for example, was supposed to pay the reparations of World War I and the terrible cost of the war, which was way overdone, and it, it basically put Germany on its ass and created the Weimar Republic of the late 20s and all the... Uh, all the breakdown of morality in society with the Berlin cafe scene and uh, you know the rise of dirty movies and we all we've heard these stories about how uh, how New Orleans esque Mardi Gras esque Germany had become in the late 1920s to the point that people didn't even recognize the German culture, hey Debbie, anymore. And quite a few people started to become alarmed. But besides that, because Germany inflated their currency to try to pay back their war reparations, we know that their economy went into a tailspin. The stories of people carrying wheelbarrows full of pushing wheelbarrows of money into stores to be able to buy a loaf of bread, things like that. But the rest of the world slowed down too, right? Trade, trade, trade with China and the rest of the world. Trade, trade with Japan, trade with Europe. Everything entered a synchronized period of slowdown. And people started to get more and more concerned. So countries started to take steps to protect their own, what they perceived to be, to do something that would protect their economy. And that was begin to raise tariffs. Remember the Smoot-Hawley tariff of the late 1920s, early 1930s, started raising tariff rates. And what happened is other countries, in their agony, started raising their own tariff walls, walls until international trade came to a virtual standstill by early 19. 1931, 1932, and all these countries were being crushed under their debt loads. And Hoover called in 1931 a conference to try to sort out international finances and things like that. It did not end well. And all it did was start to hasten the flow of gold out of the United States, and we're not going to get into that, but... We used to be on a uh, gold-backed dollar back then. And probably we should still be today, but that's a different matter. The point is, countries start to feel the friction rise if it's hard to make a dollar. Right? It's like when you rub two sticks together, it gets hotter and hotter. Thank you, Blondie. And that's the early stages that we see, that we see now that the heat is rising. It's harder for companies to make a dollar. Look at AT&T struggling mightily. 
they might not be in, in the present form three or four years from now. Same with a lot of our classical, classic companies that are out there. May not, may not make it through what's coming up in the coming years. But this is leading to somebody asked, what about war? Well, it wasn't until in the country's agonies around the world, Germany, Japan, even America, we started to have the rise of totalitarianism because it was perceived that democracy had failed us, that capitalism had failed us, that somehow what was supposed to be a great free market system ended up collapsing and leaving millions of people destitute in America. Something that, ever na that never happened. Okay? Unprecedented. So what happens? Smart people in positions of inferior authority, i.e., you know, somebody like an Adolf Hitler, or the military establishment in Japan starts to fill that vacuum of people's fear that things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. And people like Hitler come along and they say, you know what, we clean up this country, we close down, we get rid of all the riffraff, we get rid of the, uh, you know, we attack gay, and, you know, there was all kinds of moves to purify German society. And the same thing happened over in Japan and in Italy because people were desperate. They were economically desperate. And when somebody comes along, how you doing, Tess? And when somebody comes along and says, I know the solution, I know the path out of this misery, if that person gets enough traction, and is, a, is enough of an inferior figure, you know, not a major figure, but somebody that's capable of going upward in attention, publicity, and things like that. It can gather its own momentum. And in the case of these, these dictators, these authoritarian regimes like Nazism and things like that, they were founded due to economic weakness. And what really drove Hitler was his sense that Germany had been crapped on and betrayed by Jews in world War, during World War One. That um, the the settlement, the armistice that was foisted on Germany was terrible, and the war reparations should have never been paid. That got people very excited. You know, everybody wants a scapegoat. Everybody wants somebody to blame. So it was very easy. We're seeing it today. It's very easy to polarize people today. And it's going to be a lot easier coming up. And with polarization comes action. Okay, because you can't just come up and say, I'm going to make shit better. You've got to make shit better. You've got to actually do something. And in the case of Hitler, he told the West, we're not going to pay. How you doing, Scottish? We're not going to do, we're not going to pay jack shit for the war. And we're going to make Germany a proud nation again. And we're going to reunite, we're going to unite the whole Germany. We're going to march into the annex part of Austria, take that under control. And then the German people in the Czech, in the, uh, in what's Czechoslovakia. And it just started to take on a life of its own until people started to resist. Why is it so easy to polarize people today? Well, back in the 1930s, we really only had radio in its infancy. And we had newspapers. And one of the very earliest things that the National Socialist Party in Germany did was take control of the press whether radio uh, and started spitting out the propaganda began about how Germany could be better, who was responsible for the downfall, the plight of World War the aftermath of World War One and who was to blame. At that time people were poor man, the, the 
you know, the Deutschmark's not worth shit. You had terrible inflation. People are in panic mode, and somebody like Hitler came along, got the attention, because said, I can push the reset button and get us on the path of glory again. And he did it. Just by that popular thing, just like Roosevelt did with the fireside speeches and the, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself, the right words at the right time can have a very, very powerful impact on people. And it can sometimes create its own self-fulfilling sort of prophecy. We're not going to pay our world war debts of World War I anymore. Screw them. Screw them. We're going to have a united Germany. We're going to be proud. We're going to bring back our superiority again. Celebrate the Aryan people of, of uh, northern, uh, northern Europe and these scumbags down south and these kind of people. It's a very, very tough situation. Of course, they don't think there's a problem here because we have, we're still a couple years from this, Magda, okay, in my opinion. Okay, but let me finish this. As the friction built and these guys started to get ahead of steam, Mussolini, uh, Tojo over in Japan, and started becoming more uh, imperialistic in their aims, there was going to be a natural point where there would be some resistance from the other side. Okay, because nobody gave a shit when when China was suffering in 19, beginning in 1931, nobody gave a shit. Okay? But it reached a point where when Japan reached out to strike the United States, then it was a totally different story. Or when Germany moved to invade Poland on September 1st, 1939. Or when Mussolini made his drive into Ethiopia to attempt to conquer Ethiopia. A bad brew. But remember the momentum they had. Business was booming because the war machines were gone. There were plenty of jobs at home for everybody that wanted to work. The early gains of war came easy. My point is, it takes a while for friction to reach a level where people's desperation begins to show. Okay, China and Russia will merge against the West. It's, it's, you know, let them merge. It doesn't matter, okay? Because they'll have a hard time pulling the rest of the world along with them, okay? And that'll be a good panic point for drawing in other nations into a total world war because believe me Magda or, or Tio when I tell you as much as some nations many nations poo poo the United States when it comes to regimes that they would rather live under and political systems that they would rather this one over that one they're going to choose the United States model every single time. So tell me other countries that would fall in line besides some shithole Central Asian republics, some of the Islamist nations of the Middle East, okay, the odd African nation here and there. But otherwise, it's definitely the rest of the world against these two and I hate to tell you China is not going to take that China is not going to be a part of that they know it's a no go but they'll come out and give lip service to it because it draws attention to the fact that China is in a full scale collapse right now okay the banking system's caving in how you do in uh, viral sport There's nobody with rush to their side. You think other nations of importance, especially in uh, other continents of the world, would cheer? It wouldn't happen. If it's dropping nukes, 
Well, it's game over. And there's some biblical interpretations that say, well, the world ended by flood in Noah's time and it was predicted to end in fire the next time. Okay? There would be no more flood. It would be a firestorm. People interpret the book of Daniel that on October 8th or whatever of this year that the that the that the second horseman of the apocalypse war will be unleashed. Will it? Plenty of people have made those interpretations for tons of years and well they've probably been wrong. Okay. But we got to bring this down to the here and now. Yes, Pelosi's globetrotting. Sticking the flag where it shouldn't ought to be stuck. You wake up one morning and she's she's rah rahing in Armenia. What the fuck? Taiwan. So we're helping to draw those lines. Okay? Don't be fooled. You know, we're not a nation that is going to let other people call the shots on what's going to be. So when Taiwan looks a little shaky, hey man, we're stepping right in there. When when Armenia looks a little shaky against Azerbaijan, man, we're in there. But think of the way our cost structure is going up now, providing material for these wars. It was said today that just today's rise in interest rates of three quarters of one percent is going to put another trillion dollars over ten years, another hundred billion a year onto the federal budget, the annual budget deficit per year. Putin is suffering from rallies right again. and will go blind. I'm not sure, Blondie. They've they've said a lot of things. I'll believe it when they when I see it. They said Hit, Hitler had syphilis or something, right? Right. I'm like a, when it happens, then I'll I'll do it because people float all kinds of stuff out there. So that's what I'm saying. It takes time for war to in a major way. To happen, and we're nowhere near the point of of friction right now. Of course, the financial always feels it first. The first wave of pain is always the markets because they're the most sensitive to the future. They're the lookouts on the deck of the Titanic, on the bow, looking for icebergs. Well, they're seeing a lot of icebergs right now. But the average person here is not going to skip their dinner at Grossman's Deli or Mary's Pizza Shack or miss their, miss their Grubhub, Postmates, Uber Eats delivery. We haven't reached that part of trickle down where the average person on the street is even aware of the dynamics that are going on. Yeah, that's it's mind-boggling too, uh, truth teller, that the same thing happened in China where much, well, probably will work to their benefit in the future because they can say, as I've said here many times, we told you so. We told you capitalism was a bad brew. Thank God we still have the National People's Congress. We still have the te teachings of Chairman Mao. To guide us on the straight and narrow. There's no publicity anymore of any stars, any big financial hitters in China. They all have just melted into the background. Nowhere around. Hey, how you doing, Donna? It's amazing how the scene is being set up. And this is my opinion is why that uh, on a on a comparison level, I don't think the Chinese economy will ever surpass the economy of the United States because well, number one, they'll both go down together. But China could have a little bit of a harder fall because it's gonna come really hard down on their society, which it's doing right now. They have to put tanks on the streets outside of banks 
to keep people from stringing up bankers by the neck from trees. Everybody thinks, oh, the Chinese are very docile. We'll start fucking with their money and see how docile they are. See how the old Ai, the whole the old grandma, see how she'll stand up to uh, the baddest ass people's liberation uh, army guy. So, in my opinion, places like the Chinese, they're looking very carefully at when they're going to pull the trigger and the next cultural revolution starts. Now, we know in this country that things are slowing down. The older books for high technology are caving in. We know China's not ordering shit from over here. We know lumber prices, copper prices, oil prices, all that shit's going on. The forces of inflation are long being put, that fire's already put out. And I tell you one reasoning for that that you should bear in mind, and I'm going to draw this whole deal together, and it's this. If inflation was an issue long term, like it was in the 1970s when I was in high school and college, and I remember it like it was yesterday. Thank you, Susie. If it was a problem, why in the hell would short-term interest rates be higher than long-term interest rates? If you saw a country that was inflating its currency, you would think to yourself, shit, if they do it once, they're going to do it for the next 20 years. I'm not going to hold 20-year U.S. government bonds. The spending power on that will be one-tenth of what I put into it in 20 years. Screw that. Interest rates would have to explode upward to have people put money to buy long-term government debt. It's not doing that. So it's telling you right to your face, inflation is not the problem here. Deflation is going to be the big problem. And also financial risk in the whole global system. Right? People think, oh, the Fed raised interest rates three quarters of a percent. They did. But I'll, I'll show on a chart tomorrow. The Fed follows the money rate. It doesn't lead it. And six-month T-bill, six-month T-bills are already like close to four percent. Okay, yeah, you didn't think about deflation. That's what I'm saying. The reason that long-term interest rates have not exploded upward is because people still believe the smartest people that that will be a haven. When everything else is going to shit, the United States government securities will be the last decent piece of paper in the world. And it very well could be. But in the meantime, interest rates on the short term are going up. They're drawing money in at that end. And now you have the two-year rate higher than the 10-year rate. Very strange very thin. I'm not sure what degrowth is. I've told you before, I'll say it again, and you've heard it here first. Interest rates are rising because of risk. Okay. People understand that the systems are going cuckoo right now. And with rising interest rates comes falling stock prices. We are right now at Little Bighorn. We're up on the hill and we see the Indians coming over, Native Americans coming over their rise. We still feel confident. We're good. We don't know the fate that awaits us. But I'm going to give you some levels here to keep in mind. Hi, Jody. Hey, Mouse. June, right around my birthday, I guess, the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit 29,000, I don't know, 927 intraday, and we went all the way back up to 34,000. 
okay now it's taken three months hey Barry and we've come down to the almost to the level of June mid-June okay we're just 30,100 we're about 200 points maybe a little more than that maybe 250 points above that low something's going to happen tomorrow and we won't know until it happens but it's going to come down it's going to come down one of two ways there is the possibility well let me just finish this thought susie there is the possibility and this is what you need to watch when we go down intraday and go below the level of june if we manage to turn around and totally reverse the day and end on the high of the day just maybe down 300 but end up three or five hundred we'll probably have a pretty good rally coming up but if we go down and we broke break that level and we don't close on the highs of the day or reverse it then we're going to really start picking up steam on the downside here and really cascade because all the traditional signals are in synchronization pointing to lower prices ahead meta corporation today and you know how much i hate meta corporation and zuckerberg this guy's lost 90 billion dollars hey eddie of wealth paper wealth love you susie the world has the world has shifted beneath the earth has shifted beneath his feet since he started down the stupid path of the metaverse and i'll be damned every damn day from almost 400 to i don't know 140 bucks a share today just down 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 today it was announced quietly that they're laying off 10 percent of their workforce and we're starting to see now that the layoff notices are coming fast and furious because well things ain't going to get better in the technology world yeah 10 percent of the workers metaverse was his idea for having a virtual world that you strap this thing to your head and you live your life in a in a virtual world well fuck that man the real world people see coming up in the next two years is going to be a hell of a lot more exciting than what they see in a metaverse. Uh, Zuckerberg also has a spring, any, something about a free speech case. Okay. Antitrust. All that stuff. All those chickens are coming home to roost, kitten cat. Oh, well, thank you, Patricia. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we're to ver what I'm saying is we finally reached this very critical juncture that I've been expecting here, this test of the low of June. And I have a feeling the way the trends are going, and Jerome Powell, the United States Federal Reserve Chairman, said, this guy's damn the torpedoes full steam ahead. You don't ever have to wonder what this guy's saying like we did when Alan Greenspan was the Federal Reserve Chairman. He would sit before Congress and people would scratch their head because they had no idea what the hell this guy's talking about. This guy's plain smoking, spoken. He says, we're probably going to go up to 4.75%. A full percentage point of where before we even begin to think about uh, that. Now remember, Robin, the Fed is following interest rates. They're not leading it. This is the mistake that a lot of people make. Jerome Powell has no choice but to raise interest rates because the financial markets or the three-month T-bill, the six-month T-bill rates are ahead of where the federal funds rate is. So he's just catching... Hey, how you doing, Nicole? He's just playing catch-up with the reality of what's going on. And I'll show you a chart later. It shows that because I think that risk in the financial system is rising okay and I think that people have absolutely reached the breaking point 
of what they can afford within this nation and other nations around the world. What's up, Andrew? Okay. When this last bout of inflation hit because of the deficit, you know, because of the stimulus and the fact that we closed the economy for, I don't know, 90 days or just, uh, you know, 100 days or whatever, we shut down the economy. That was an unprecedented activity. Even during World War I, when you had half a million people, I don't know, half a million people dying in the Spanish influenza pandemic, we never shut down this nation because this fucking nation was at war. And we had the Alien and Sedition Act that uh, Woodrow Wilson signed. And if you said anything against to demoralize the war effort, you were chucked into jail. No newspapers here reported on the pandemic. People just, they grabbed their nuts, they grabbed their mask, and they went on and they worked. This shutdown was an epic error because of the dislocations and signals that it sent when things opened up and demand was off the chart because the government had pissed away billions of dollars in personal payroll protection money, stimulus money. Then all of a sudden the signal went out to purchasing managers. Man, we managers, we don't have enough shit. The purchasing managers are on the phone to to China. We need more TVs, man. We, we're at unprecedented demand. We need more car parts. Hey, Butterfly. All because of this false signal. Because it wasn't like that before the pandemic, was it? And now we have this huge bulge. It's like a snake eating a pig. It's going to take a long time for this to work through the system. And while we're trying to work through that, here come the containers for Christmas. All right. We don't even got a third of the shit sold that we need to get the hell out of here. Now we got Christmas crap that's hitting the shelves. What's up, Mew? So we're at a very critical juncture, we're at a very critical time. If you look at the calendar, when financial calamity hits, it usually hits in the month of October. So things are setting up. And again, I don't, I'm not here to give financial advice. The time to clear out was six, seven, eight months ago. All right. But who am I? I'm nobody. I'm just one person with an opinion. All right, but I think that the global situation is going to get a lot more severe here. There's going to be a lot more friction in trade. Uh, even China has come out now and said, oh man, we, we don't, you know, why is the U.S. going to do its own lithium battery plants and things like that? That's going to hurt us here. I mean, they're, they're getting this sense that everybody's running away from China now. And they're starting to panic. Because they realize once this force gets into motion, it's very hard to reverse it. So nobody wants to open a factory in China right now. Oh, thank you, Bibi. Nobody wants to expand operations in China right now. companies like Apple's are sitting there hunched in their boardrooms in the dark of night in the wee hours of the morning trying to figure out how in the hell can we protect what we got over there and, and not insult the Chinese and tell them you're fucked and we're not putting another dime in. Yeah, well, it's, it'll be coming back to the States, but it's many, it's, it's, it's a long, deep valley it's a canyon we have to cross because we'll be missing one very, very, very important and critical ingredient for driving growth and development of factories here in the United States. And that will be the 
the shocking lack of demand. Okay, as factories are rationalizing here and Ford and General Motors and uh, house prices are going down, which they are, there's going to be less demand for shit. Okay, so it's it's companies are going to worry more about preserving their uh, their cash their cash flow. They're going to start laying off people. And I think we're on the cusp of that. We're on the cusp of that in a major way. Because as I've said before, employers don't want, they know that we've had a worker shortage. And they think to themselves, if we start blowing people out the door now, man, it could be twice as bad. It could be like insane to try to get people back here again. We've had to kiss their ass after the pandemic. The pandemic's waning. We're still kissing their ass. Can't get people to come back to the office. They're pissing down their leg talking about the uh, pandemic and stuff. They know damn well that productivity went to shit. And they need people back in that China debt they didn't pay on time. I don't. China's paid everything that they owe. China is a net net buyer of debt, not a uh, not a seller. The, set, the debt they sell is internal because nobody overseas buys their debt. Okay. Now the knock-on effect, and you can see that the pressure is building because today Bitcoin collapsed to a new bear market low at eighteen thousand. Another five hundred dollars down today. After the chairman of MTSR Corporation bought another $7 million worth yesterday. And remember, the, the nation of El Salvador bought $76 million worth of Bitcoin at about $38,000 per Bitcoin. All right. And people asked me, where will the bottom be on this on this? Um, what do you, what do you want somebody to call it today on this on this um, correction? That's the term. When will this correction be over? But if I tell this person, you know, this person got pissed today. I, I said correction. I said suppose this is a long-term trend towards zero valuation. Okay, I don't know what it'll be but I know it ain't right now a lot of people most of the people that bought Bitcoin still hold it because most of the people bought on the publicity at the peak when people told you it was going to go to two hundred fifty thousand dollars and a million dollars per Bitcoin well guess what you can be loading up the truck right now and all you want to grab for $18,500 of Bitcoin. Who wants to buy it now? Nobody. Who wanted to buy it in January of 2021 when it's touching 58000 Everybody and his mother wanted it. Now, as people start to liquidate things because they need money, they don't have the option of just holding it. And everybody tells me, oh, Rosie, they don't have to sell it. How do you know? How do you know they might lose a job? One member of the family, remember, it takes two now, two workers now to sustain the average middle America, middle class family in America, whatever middle class means. One of those people loses their job, guess what? You don't have the cash flow for it. Then, well, it's interesting you mentioned Diamond because Jamie Diamond came out once again late this afternoon and said that the crypto tokens, the Shibus, the uh, whatever the hell, all the other ones are a Ponzi scheme. 
you don't hear anybody rushing in government now to have hearings to how we're going to have Bitcoin integrated into our system. What they're getting is calls from people that say, I got fucked on Bitcoin. What are you going to do about it? Elizabeth Warren's phone must be ringing off the hook. The Senate Finance Committee, I got fucked on Bitcoin. She ain't going to allow this system. You think Powell and these people are going to allow this to be integrated into the financial system? I don't see Tom Brady pushing credit cards anymore that are Bitcoin based. That bird has flown the coop. And any time I ever ask anybody that holds Bitcoin, as politely as I can, what holds the value up of it up? They tell me it's a limited amount of Bitcoin that will be mined. Once it's done, it's over. Well, I say, how is that different than the United States Mint producing the 1909 SVDB penny? The key of the Lincoln Head Cent collection with 500,000 mints basically 1% of what uh, Bitcoin I don't get an answer well the answer is whatever somebody's willing to pay for it if you think that El Salvador and the finance committees of, self, of El Salvador aren't sitting there looking at the president and saying, you're the biggest jackass in the history of this nation. We're already poor as fuck. And you put $70 million of our precious reserves into this thing. You think this guy's going to ride this thing all the way down? Or do you think he sleeps at night looking at that, checking that price all hours of the night, praying and hoping that today's the day it turns around? Or the, or the chairman of MTSR Corporation who blew his whole treasury on buying Bitcoin. Do you really think these guys are going to hold this? There, there's going to be a point where they're going to puke this stuff out. So as far as where a bottom is, until this shit gets puked out and it goes down and stays down like a dead dog for a period of time, it ain't going to rise again in my opinion. You know, because I have the Bitcoin. One person used to hate me about Bitcoin was writing me today. I apologize. I didn't mean to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm in it. You know, I have $98,000 tied up in this stuff. Well, maybe you better consider selling. Are you kidding me? I don't know. Yeah. When the history books write this, when they write the news of this, when they write the history of this era, you better believe that Bitcoin will be a chapter written just like the Florida land boom of 1926, the stock market boom of the late 1920s, the telecom boom, the real estate boom of 2005, the internet boom of 1990, and the crazy stock boom of 20, 2020, 2019 through 2022. <laughs> I don't think Bitcoin will make it either because there'll be a point where people that have bought it have to turn to their husband and wife and say, I'm worried this thing might go to zero. Maybe we should get out while we still got our drawers on, if not our shirt. Hey, Crow. I started talking about Bitcoin when it was $38,500. I started studying and I asked people, what, what's going to support it? What's an alternative to sovereign currencies that governments can't touch? 
now they find that governments can really touch it. All right. Like India says no Bitcoin here. China says no Bitcoin. Korea says no Bitcoin. Now the United States Congress is supposed to consider this when their phone's ringing off the hook that people have got lost their ass. We're not in the gambling business as a nation. Okay? Governments aren't going to be responsible for the for what you do. And they're not going to tie something to the financial system that could come back like egg on their face. And cause another huge bailout. They're just going to tell people, look, we never got involved in it. We were going to have some hearings and, you know, it's just like buyer beware. It's just rich people that got involved in it. So we're just going to close the door, you know, and it's just going to wind down because as the need for money goes up in the future, people will liquidate whatever they can. Now, I just want to address the market a minute, the equity market, the stock market. Thank you, Jamie. Mutual funds have what are called levels of cash reserves. They're normal amounts of money that are kept aside to meet normal redemption flows. Every day there's people buying. Every day, every month, buyers come in with their retirement money. Every month, some retirees are taking money out. Okay, distribution. So they have to maintain you know, like a 5% level. All right, and we've not had a really barn burner of a of a uh, long term market decline. That means one that's measured in years, not months. And as people start to see that the value of their investment portfolios are going down, there will be a small but growing tornado that develops where on balance people start to pull out more money than they're putting in. And layoffs help to exacerbate that trend because once you're laid off, you're not contributing anymore. And what happens is these mutual funds that have exploded in numbers since 1982, the 40 years of this bull market, they start to experience situations where they don't have the cash on hand to redeem people's request to redeem. So what do they have to do? They have to start selling stock. We are just, I think, at the point, what I call like the, the doomsday device that triggers off, that on balance there'll be less cash going in and demand for money to be going out. And it will create its own vortex where the more of these stocks that are puked out for cash, the lower they'll go, the more people will step up to redeem. The lower they'll go is more sales come on. There's no other way. That's why I say I think we're at a very critical time in both the calendar and in terms of the psychology of this June low of the markets, the confluence of those uh, two factors. Could we rally? Yeah, it's possible. But it's extremely hard to rally in the face of interest rates that are going up. Because they provide alternative to stocks that weren't there for years. In other words, you could go into the bank and they'd tell you, Hey man, our our one year our one year CD is 025 percent, one quarter of one percent. Now you can go in and start to see three and a half, four percent FDIC protected, 
money is going to start to gravitate towards that. It's going to be a magnet that starts pulling money and accelerating the flow of money out of stocks because, well, people would rather have a sure thing than a speculative thing. But the Federal Reserve had rates so low for so long that nobody saved anything. Okay, it just was determined it's not worth saving because the banks don't pay anything. It all went into the stocks and created the most overpriced market in the history of the world. Uh, no, the time to do that was six and seven months ago, Buttercup Baby. Okay, but people, and I don't blame them, I'm nobody, it's just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. It was an easy call before. But I'm not going to ever be responsible for anybody else's financial decisions. All I do is talk about the economics of what's coming. Said in November in a special upload, storm clouds are coming from the east from China. Okay, another one. The most overvalued stock market in the history of mankind. How could you stay in a market like that and reasonably expect it they would get even more ridiculously overpriced? Once I once I hear all time highs or all time lows, I really start to perk up my it really gets my attention. Well, I've never said stay the course, not me. I'm just saying, I've always told people straight up, I don't give, I don't talk financial advice. I only talk about what's here and I say, the market's the most overpriced it's ever been in history. It's like if you go to the supermarket and uh, ribeye steak is $19.95 a pound and you're just getting two shopping carts to load it up. But when it's $2.99 a pound, nobody wants it. To me, we're still at a very high level here. At the 30,000 level in a Dow, we're 20% below the high. The 1929 bear market that bottomed in June of 1932, the market lost 90% of its value. That would be equivalent to a Dow of about 3,600, 3,600. Is it going to happen? I'm not a person that's going to talk about. I'm just saying this is what happened before. <clears throat> but when they tell you, just keep putting your money in, just keep putting your money in, it always comes back. Yeah, about every 30 minutes. It's coming out of San Francisco with the... Uh, People getting off work. And people think, well, my financial advisor says this or says that. What the hell background in market history does your financial advisor have? How old are they? How many bear markets have they lived through? How many how many periods of history have they studied? Andrew, you're fine. You're a very intelligent person. My stuff is just speculation, nothing more. But again, the hell was that? But again, if I give myself a grade, I give myself a grade of A. Okay? <clears throat> I think there's nothing that I've talked about that hasn't come true and is coming true. 
people psychologically, this is where the Elliott wave really helps, because people psychologically reach a breaking point almost simultaneously. Where they expect a bounce, they expect a bounce, they expect an uptrend, they expect, a, oh, it's back to business as usual, and it doesn't happen. And then they look around, they hear the news, Metaverse is laying off 10%. Metaverse? This is one of the strongest co What? This country, this company's got money coming out the wazoo. And NVIDIA, sales at NVIDIA to uh, Bitcoin mining companies have collapsed and stuff like that. Okay? People start to read these headlines. Jamie Dimon says that uh, crypto token coins are a Ponzi scheme. and It starts to undermine people's confidence. When, company, when countries ban Bitcoin, it's in effect telling you they're not going to allow another alternative currency to exist within their borders. You may say, well, they can't control it. The hell they can't. Doesn't matter what school you went to, Amanda. Whether you went to Duke, I can show you rich people on the street that had the finest in education. You either understand how the puzzle's going together or you don't. And I hate to say it, but if nobody picked up the phone and said to you, you know what, we've had a hell of a run here. We're reaching historically high overpriced overvaluations on stock. Maybe we should lighten up a lot here. But it goes against the average broker because the average broker is only geared to have people buy, not sell. You'll never see brokers telling people sell because it lowers their asset base and they make less money because their base of assets shrinks. So it's always buy, buy. Now, I'm saying, if you have that confidence, that's a wonderful thing. That's great. I admire that. Stay the course, which you have. That's cool. And I hope things blossom and work out for you. I hope I'm dead wrong. But we reach a point where enough negative news comes out, and enough, we're going we're gonna to have a straw that breaks the camel's back, and we're going to have a really big increase in selling volume here that's going to break all records of selling and I'm just saying it's going to be I told you guys this year there was going to be something that you're going to wish witness that'll be once in once in five generations and I still believe that that is coming as Wave 3 unfolds here of the Elliott Wave. Wave 3 of 1 off the top of this. Uh, What's up, Darry D? But I'm happy. If you're, if you're happy and he has all those credentials and things, that's a wonderful thing. A lot of people use a broker. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you to gotta have something. I never faulted anybody for anything here. I always said, do what you want to do. I just have a mouthpiece. I have a platform. And I can't sit there and not say something when I see something coming down the pike. What was the old thing that Bush said? If you see something, say something. Now, I don't have I don't have any credibility, but the credibility is growing dramatically now because things are happening. But I wish everybody would. And you're probably a lot younger than I am, Amanda, so maybe it be all and end all, it ain't going to matter in the end. But we're talking about events coming up that are going to reshape societies worldwide and reduce the surplus populations. Okay, because right now the friction, the heat in the pot is going up. We're all like in a crab pot. And the heat's going up below us. OK, 
Okay, it's just a question of uh, how far it's going to go before people push the button. We have other depressants that come forward too, and that has to do with pension funds, particularly on state and local levels, because as assets within, say, CalPERS, the California Pension and Retirement System, as those assets, and I would venture to say that California's more heavily invested into the high tech, the, you know, the tech stocks than the blue chips. As they go down, the the um, money's needed to put that pension fund on an actuarially sound basis. In other words, that it can meet its obligations is not going to be enough, and they will have to raise taxes at that point. They will. That money will have to come from somewhere that pays the state troopers, the sheriffs, the teachers. The DMV workers, the whole shebang. Okay, so I'm just telling you, all the everything's lined up like the stars. Okay, that tells it that tells us we're going into a period, a long period of liquidation of financial assets for a lot of reasons. Uh, eat the rich, get really useless at the top. Well, everybody always says the rich. But the rich create the jobs. They have the risk capital. They're the ones who take all the risks of new businesses, formations, and things. And the people that pull coffee at Starbucks take no risk whatsoever. But they'll come in there and demand the keys to the executive, uh, the executive boardroom. Then the rich, 90% of the taxes in this nation are paid by 10% of the people. Start going after them and you will truly gut this nation in terms of formation of capital. People that are willing to take business risks. <clears throat> All right, buttercup, buttercup, just have a conversation. Don't do anything rash. Okay, <laughs> Andrew. I'm just saying that we know looking around that the world is slowing down right now. We know it. We see it around us. You have to ask yourself, what's going to turn that trend around? And I don't see anything on... If anything, rising interest rates are going to accelerate. As more people say, oh, I'd rather have my money in a four-year treasury. I'd rather have my money in a two-year treasury note free of state and local tax for 4%. They look pretty damn good in the world today where things are going to Lulu. Yeah, capital gains. I think how many billions and billions of Elon Musk pay in capital gain taxes. They pay a lot. Okay, and let's not fault them because they're the ones that had great idea. Yeah, I left your comment, Cindy. I hope you feel better, honey. They're the ones that innovate. They're the ones that take the risk. They're the ones that actually have the business brains to, to think of new industries. Whereas the average person is thinking about what they're going to have for dinner. Or what movie they're going to see on Netflix. That ship's already sailed. How you doing, PC? We've already had the democracy that's been beholden to the people and given them everything that they want. Remember the Milton Feech Friedman quote? Should we play it again? Why the hell not? <clears throat> it's 
get out of here. Fuck you, magical. I don't care if you. Ooh, let's see. This should be interesting. I love this. Let's see if we can get this. Everybody listen up on this. Let me make sure the volume's turned all the way up. Those that want government to do more and more are the very ones that brought us to where we are today. Let's hear everyone put the window. I want to be able to hear this. This is my boy. I'm just sorry he's passed away now. Let me see. Talk on it. Where is it? Where are you, you mofo? I love this. Where is it? Where in the hell did that go? And did I take it down? I don't know. Oh well, maybe I played it too many times. Oh, here it is. One place and one place only. Washington, D.C. And in Washington, D.C., the chief source is a Greek temple on Constitution Avenue, which houses the Federal Reserve Board. And a major accomplice, of course, sits in the halls of Congress in Washington. They are a major accomplice because you tell them to be. The American people have been telling Congress for many years, spend more money on us, please. It has imposed inflation as a tax. That's one tax that you don't have to vote for. But you have to pay. Inflation is Brilliant stuff right there. Brilliant stuff. We're in this pickle because people have told Congress spend more, give us more, don't raise our taxes, uh, have student loans underwritten by the government, have housing underwritten by the government, have food and education underwritten by the government. Okay? But I always say, and I've said for years, what happens when you reach a point where the government has exhausted its ability to do anything? Then you have the most number of people in the history of the world that are the most dependent on government at that point in time, the least able to fend for themselves. And closest to going over the edge. And remember, over half the people that make $250,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. How does that happen? Used to be the average person just wanted a Chevrolet, a Toyota, a Honda. Now you got to have a $90,000 work truck that's never going to see a day of work. Because it looks good. Because it'll impress the neighbors. I look like I'm a successful, but I have no bench depth at all. That's right, Donna. And remember... Stuff gets really serious, and somebody brilliantly said this a couple months ago. When people stop worrying about impressing others and start worrying about surviving, then you know you're in the stew. So the average stockbroker that's making 150000 a year, the average real estate broker that's making one hundred fifty, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year, They've put themselves into fancy multi-million dollar homes because they thought linearly that what is is always what will be. Nobody told them to save anything. So their natural, in hey Lee, their natural inclination is to leverage their life to the hilt. Borrow everything they can. Buy the craziest and most expensive shit that they can buy. And live the high life like, uh, you know, the real housewives of OC. Man, I can't wait to go down there in 2024. Start to see uh, see all the plywood over the windows. <laughs> Did 
Just some food for thought. I just happen to have been in acute study of this stuff since 1980 when I bought shares of Chrysler Corporation when the bailout was announced and Lee Iacocca came in. <clears throat> so I've watched. I was riding down the road for my cost accounting class on August 8th of 1982 when the bull market kicked off that day. I remember it like it was yesterday. Market went up 33 points in a day on a 733 level or whatever on the Dow. That was 5% in one day. And I was hooked after that. That would be like the market going up from the peak at about uh, 1,800 Dow points in a day. Yeah, the K car, that's right. We had a K car when I was growing at that age. Plymouth Reliant, yeah. I've seen the whole course of interest rates over 42 years drop until we reach zero. And when that starts to reverse, to think that that's not going to have any implications on stock prices and things and real estate. You know, the other thing to think about is interest rates go up because the government start to suck up every fucking available dollar. Because now they know because of the inflation, holy shit, we can't do that again. How much more debt do you want to monetize? Yeah, thank you, Slugbug. It's great to see you. As usual. They're giving money out. Yeah, there's people doing that, buying crap like boats, going on cruises. This was the greatest thing that ever happened. And if they couldn't go out and celebrate, they held that until... When the pandemic stuff was lifted, man, they hit Vegas with a vengeance. And Vegas jumped up those slot holds and things. I was watching some guy today, Slot Massacre is the name of the channel. He was whining because he couldn't get any freebies at Mandalay Bay anymore. And I put in the comment section, Hey bro, casinos aren't banks. Alright. If you... Hey VN, thank you. If you are not wise enough to understand that post-pandemic, because they couldn't make a dime for two years, if you don't think that they're desperate to get every dollar out of you that they can, why in the hell would you sit down in a slot machine like it's 2019, unless it was just discretionary money that you took a thousand or whatever, screw it. Record-breaking hold. Record-breaking profits. And sadly, uh, <laughs> Wynn can't even make a profit now. Spending on the... Yeah, people bought cars like crazy. Right? Spending on... Uh, because people don't want it. They think it'll ha it'll just be... Yeah, everybody wants something free. That's the American condition these days. Just ask our government. What was the latest one? You don't pay your... You can't pay your student loan? Here's $10,000 of forgiveness. What the hell? I listened to this guy, William Lease, who was a punter for Texas Christian University... And he's like, man, I had to work two jobs to pay for to pay a hundred thousand dollars in student loans. And they made her through the closure. They need the money. Yeah, they need the money back. They all do. Win paid people through the uh, through it, right? So we set this precedent of always more. And then we happen to be in an election year. You think this would have gone through if it wasn't an election year? Well, I still think that, uh, yeah, yeah, TCU. Yeah, TCU's playing SMU in the, what is it, the cast iron griddle?
I mean, it's natural to want something for nothing. There's, it's just, it's human nature. You know, if they're going to hand out PPP loans, man, get the paperwork out and start doing it, dude. I don't know, call yourself XYZ, uh, you know. We're no worse than anybody else corporation. And let's go, man. Now all that money's dried up, and guess what? It ain't going to be coming back again. And now you're going to see the air pumped out of the bell jar, and you're going to see restaurants suffering, and uh, it's not fair to the kids. Yeah, of course it's not fair, Donna Gray. Donna Guy, it's an additional way that we drive wedges and separate people in America. The message we send is, it doesn't matter what you do because the government will always come along and bail you out. So why be why be prudent? I wonder how many millions of people in this nation have just said, what's the point? Man, were we stupid just to pay off that loans and that kind of stuff? Driving a wedge. Yeah, it enables the continuing corruption. The overbuilding of, uh, of, of universities went through the fattest period in their history. Expanded like crazy because the government's underwriting education. <laughs> Just really bad precedents for people. You don't have to think ahead when you got the government there, right, Don? It's like, don't worry, stuff gets bad. They'll cover the mortgages. We'll have another mortgage forbearance. That'll really uh, destroy the landlords and people. We're just destroying the fabric of responsibility in this nation. That there's no accountability and there's no more moral hazard of taking on a loan. It doesn't matter. It's It went a long time ago in banking. Nobody cared anymore about, hey Morgan, nobody cared anymore about how they lent money. Because they knew all their shitty loans would be bought up by the government and held by the Federal Reserve. Yeah, I don't, I don't hold any portfolio for Donald Trump. You'll see that his, uh, his star is waning right now. People are starting to distance themselves from him. And uh, I, you know, it's going to be very hard to reach that popularity. But it could happen with the markets turning down here. You know, there'll still be plenty of people that want to back his... Um, what he does, and that's that's their business. But I'm saying, if you think Donald Trump is going to be able to do anything different, that's going to make a bit of hoot and holler about what's going on in the world, it's not. Trump said Putin. No, I don't know, Magda. Well, that was then. This is now. You know, we've had an uh, invasion by Russia. We've, we've just had a confluence of factors. We have a declining resource anyway. <clears throat> I don't want to start a fight in the chat because a lot of people here are very pro. Trump is, is their right. And a lot of people are anti, which is their right too. So as I maintain a perfect neutrality on that and think what you want but it does appear that things are coming unraveled <clears throat> well we can only speculate on that julie uh, crazy loan yeah crazy loans it just set the precedent for bailout well i don't know about that magda <clears throat> The supply chain was broken, but it did, you know, even those payroll protection loans, I hate to think how many of them were poured into equity stocks and how many of them were poured into Bitcoin. Okay, how much of that is going up in smoke? 
Too much money leads to speculation. Rampant speculation. So does it... I know that will not go down too well. Well, you know. Do... Will there be good times ahead? Yeah, there'll be there'll be periods of uh, you know joy in individual lives and communities. Yeah, you know it's just that we're going to lose people along the way. As I said, the day the government shuts off the spigot is uh, you know the day the welfare checks bounce is not a day I want to be in the hood. Yeah, they'd be better off, Donna Guy, but there's no incentive to think ahead when the government's ready to step in at a moment's notice and drop more printed money onto an economy. Take the money supply from 1.2 billion, 1.2 trillion to 4 trillion virtually overnight. You don't think the ramifications of that are <coughs> severe? Yeah, they'll be haunting Powell's skull. But don't be fooled in here. The Federal Reserve follows interest rates. They don't lead it. He has no choice but to put up rates. Because the underlying dynamics of what's going on now leave him no alternative. He can't afford to have the arbitrage of three and six month T-bills against Fed, Fed funds rate. The people who are bought, banks are borrowing at the Federal Reserve window and buying treasuries for they're borrowing at 2.5% and buying treasuries at 4%. That doesn't do anything to help the economy. It's just, it's just an arbitrage opportunity. Yeah, you're not going to be safe. Open closet on that. Yeah, it probably can, Blondie. I see commercials all the time on YouTube and TikTok. Well, if you've not applied for your, if you work during the pandemic, you're eligible for a $1,500. Hmm. Yeah, you can disagree. Our chat proves that you can have disagreements here. Hey, Mike Jordan. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Brenda. We have disagreements all the time. I could be full of shit with my assessment of the future. But we maintain a level of respect here where people have their opinion. Yeah, they might snipe a little bit, snip a little bit at each other. But they know that we're not going to change anybody's mind when it comes to politics. We're smart enough on that. <clears throat> we're going to see more of that stuff, Julie, where we have a splitting of the states apart. And truth be told, hey, P2E, truth be told, it's been very easy to sit in the states of Illinois, New York, Massachusetts, Maryland, Connecticut, and just not give a shit about what happens with border control. Now, it's a stunt to dump people into Martha's Vineyard, but it makes the point. Okay? This brings it home to you. Right? Now, you take responsibility. You have as, you have as, as equal responsibility as we do, and you cannot say that because we happen to be on the border, it's our responsibility. No, it's a federal responsibility not a state responsibility but we have to take it upon ourselves and this shit just yeah Lee this just this shit just splits the nation it turns state against state and it just it's it's not a good recipe for the future something you know it shot down in flames what was that Mike Yeah, lots of people are desperate. 
Yeah, it's not humanitarian, but these people see this as the guiding light of America. They're, they've are they been raised seeing America as a land of opportunity. They have relatives that work up here that send money down there, and they know that there's money to be made. And it's hard to tell people, don't go follow that. It's like the land rush and the Oklahoma land rushes and those with get up and go, get up and go. Yeah, I don't think so, Andrew. The people that have the fortitude and the guts to make that perilous journey and stuff, they may not be the worst people to, to bring in. To be its own country and free well, I don't know, PC, you're gonna it's everything is gonna get futile here. You can see Newsom and DeSantis. And, right? The battle lines are being drawn. But you'll see as California's fortunes turn down with the decline of capital gains and the $100 billion budget surface surplus goes bye-bye. You'll see more friction between states of who's going who's gonna to pay what. Because when, it stop, when states stop believing that the federal government has their best interests at heart, well, it's time to get the hell out of that union, right? Texas and Arizona and New Mexico have tried to get attention for years and say, why can't we have a border wall? Yeah, we're humanitarian. But we need to have controlled immigration like we had through our history. Good point, huh? But you know, unfortunately, a lot of Democrats see that as a base of voters that come in, get rescued, get signed up, and get on the path to citizenship and vote. So there's a, there's a political incentive to grow that base all the time. And that's just being realistic. Companies looking for cheap manual labor because they're desperate for it. I have a wall with my eyes on Hawaii. If uh, Trump gets rid of they might want to. I'm not sure. It's, it's, um, it's interesting, Lee, you know. Take care, Andrew. It's quite an interesting rubric. But I tend to think that people stop being seen as humans and they start to be seen as political base and things. And it should be of concern to the Democrats that so many uh, Latinos have turned Republican here. I mean, you got to understand the stories that get flashed around Central America and Mexico. It's, I've been down there. I've heard people talk to talk about, you know, oh, there's 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 labor shortages in America. They need people to work. Uh, you know, there's nine million unfulfilled low low scale low skilled jobs that need to be filled. They get the message. The local politicians are glad, man. Get the hell on the road. There's your there's your North Star. The hell are you doing waiting around here? Get your ass on the road. You know, it's, it's just the one less whining person to have to worry about, right? No, I don't think illegal immigrants will ever be allowed to vote. Uh, it's been blue since, yeah, they voted in a Republican. Because, you know, the local indigenous people down there see what's going on in the world. So, like I said, there's things on each side that I don't like. Yeah, the living conditions aren't that great. I know, Brenda, but the money is on a South American, Central American wage. It's phenomenal. <laughs> uh, 
So as election day nears, the, the heat will go up on, you'll see the heat increase on Biden again here. So it's not going to be a slam dunk that every woman's going to be voting a bad abortion uh, stuff when they just lose their job or whatever. Going to go over to Wednesday night market, but we don't have them anymore. It's getting chilly anyway. Just wait till the pension benefit guarantee board uh, wants to hold their hand out. be really something when AT&T dumps their pension plan on that. Yeah, we're going to be warm on the weekend, which is fine by me. I'm still hoping, uh, you know, Sunday or Monday to hit the road for Vegas. But I'm helping somebody move right now. It's kind of a payback thing, so... get this discussion underway today because we're we're coming to an important uh, juncture here a lot of a lot of big money is going to move on what happens in the next few days oh I'm gonna need a Pulling off here. Still nice 71, but the wind's kind of chucking a little bit here. Grab a few more boxes. on the road or I would hit him. Let's see if we can get a few more cartons. Julie. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, you always get the right side of stuff. Forget tomorrow night we got the uh, outlook for the weekend, NFL, NCAA. I'm going to begin moving that to Wednesdays because uh, uh, we're starting to get some Thursday games these days. So uh, I think we're going to be moving that to Wednesday. I think Mr. Z and I, we got eight bets we're rolling this week, so when you're doing well, sometimes you want to press it a little bit. So we're going to press it hard, so you definitely want to be around tomorrow night. Yeah, I'm only on one beer, so... Make it count. Where 
was it here? I think it was here. Yeah. Uh, where in the hell is it? Oh, I might have to come tomorrow. I don't know where in the hell it is. I think it's just got a lot of weirdos back here. I think I'll wait till tomorrow. Yeah, we the Chiefs is one of our bets. To me, this line looks like a gift. Chiefs are one of the elite teams. I think I'll go tomorrow. It just looks like a bad setup over there. Good night, Brenda. Take care, sweetie. Well, here's our mail guy. this person doing throwing up over there alright my sweatshirt my gear oh yeah Sarah we got all the Redwoods, the Redwood Empire. Ooh, I think we got a box opening tonight, too. Ah, bird must be out. Yeah, well, the lines get sharper. There's definitely a few trap games out there. Especially in the NCAA. Every week, the lines get sharper and sharper and sharper. Hey, sure not. As I said, the low-hanging fruit has already been picked. Yeah, yard's doing okay. Get this set up here. Boy, I got a... Okay.
box opening from a really nice YouTuber, a wonderful person. Bill Cody. You see him in the chat? Let me get this open and then I can put the knife away before I harm myself. There's a lot of goodies in here. We've got something for Blackbird. Oh, we got some cool stuff in here. So this is for Blackbird. I'm going to sit this aside. Blackbird. Yeah, let me uh, let me get set up, guys, and we'll go through this. I want to give plenty of attention on this. Bill took the time to send all this to the lovely bride. in this baby. Wonderful Ms. Lulu. Nice. Love that. We got a jacket on here. Is that Bill? Hey, Bill, how you doing? Everything arrived safe and sound. Put that aside for Blackbird. Tennessee. Uh, I think uh, Old Miss might have a little bit of problem with covering that spread. Tomorrow it'll be a good day to test whether Tennessee has cemented their elite status. In here. Whether they're one of the ten elite teams.
Trying to get the side chat on. Bear with me a second. Come on, man. Yeah, I can't remember who sent it to me. It's wonderful. I think it's got it's got my name on the back of it too. It's really nice and big. So it's really nice. <laughs> uh, well, I hate to say, but uh, George is George is like the cock of the walk there, Amanda. They're just they're on a whole different level than every other team. The Bulldogs are they're the real deal. All right, there we are. Okay. Just down. We don't know you, Morgan. Never heard that name before. So welcome to the chat for the very first time ever. <coughs> Never had a Susie Pyramito in my chat. Yardley cocoa butter. Oh, that smells so good. Yardley's like the good stuff, right? Helps soften dry skin with pure cocoa and shea butter and vitamin E. Ooh, 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 ooh. Look at that. Nice soap. And I got two of them. One of them is shea buttermilk, which also smells amazing. <laughs> Amanda, you are too much. But let me tell you, isn't that nice? Uh, we don't know Kool-Aid Girl Morgan. Just drop it, okay? Welcome to the stream. Don't worry about it. That's Blackbird. Don't worry about it. We welcome everybody. Oh well, Sticky Fingers Memphis style sweet and smoky barbecue sauce. Look at that. Damn, we go we go shopping on Friday. I'm gonna get me some pork, man, and do it up with that. That's exciting. That's exciting. That is exciting, Bill. No kidding, we love sauces here and stuff. Memphis barbecue. Here we go. Oh, Corky's Ribs and Barbecue Original. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. <laughs> Hot damn, man. Woo! I'm gonna give me some pork. Yes, I bet it is. And then we got Happy Halloween from Bill and Michelle. Thank you, Bill. You're wonderful. Yeah, I can't wait to try it. Oh, well, Bill, you shouldn't have done that. Little, little, little beer money there. Thank you, Bill. Happy Halloween. What a wonderful person on the chat. Bill, you rock. I can't wait to get some pork on uh, this weekend. Woo! Put some of that on it. Maybe I'll also have it for Bobby. I know, aren't I crazy? Probably knife myself. Well, here's another one. What a burger honey barbecue sauce. Made famous on the honey barbecue trip chicken strip sandwich I can't wait to try it I gotta remember to get gas in the grill wow Bill how thoughtful of you and Michelle 
So wonderful. And the postage these days to send anything is insane. Let's see, we got a Chinese chotsky here. Let's open it up and see what we got inside. Well, oh, we got hanging. Yes. We're not going to put it up yet, but we got strings of uh, pumpkins here. Yes, yes, yes. That's going to be great. I'm going to keep them in here. We're not going to let the cat out of the bag too early. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I got one for Blackbird, too. So kind. So kind. Yeah, very neat lights. Thank you, Bill. And I think Bill's waited patiently. Let me get the name off of here so we don't dox anybody. Uh, I'll probably use this carton tomorrow. Oh, I got one. Wait a minute. But wait, there's more. Yes. This is the hanging, and I'm not going to open it, but it's a witch on a broomstick. How very cool. Thank you, Bill. We're going to put that with the other stuff for Halloween. We're going to do it up. Wait, I got great sauces. I wonder which one I should try first. Sweet and smoky. I really want to get that one first. And then they got Corky's Original. I'm excited for that. Thank you. exciting and I got some nice soap too and thank you for the beer money yeah very nicely done I'm, I'm really blessed to have people like Bill in my life I'm gonna try it all Whataburger sauce pumpkins in the chat yeah I can't wait till Halloween time I can't wait till holiday time you guys know how I love holiday to be blessed by people like Bill and his Bill and his wife. So wonderful. Wally World here has Whataburger sauce. I'm gonna try it. We love you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness. You and Michelle, thank you. Let me tell you, it takes some effort to get that stuff together. Get that lights ordered in and then box that up, go to the post office and pay the horrendous shipping. Yeah, I love that sweatshirt. It's nice and big. So, <laughs> it's got built-in hand warmers on it. I like it. I like it, Susie. Makes a bomb green chili patty. We don't have any water burgers up here. Uh, let's close some windows. I got too damn many windows open. Close, close. Mm -hmm. It's the time of year. Do 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 do. All right, let's get this set. Here we go. Oh, is it Sharon's birthday? 
Let's give a song. Sharon also sent lots of stuff here and appreciate it for her. Sharon Sheridan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sharon. Ooh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, babe. I hope you have a great one. Another great, 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 great supporter of the channel. She really is a doll. I gotta go get the mail. Hold on. Susie! Baby's nice and comfortable. Thank you, Sharon. Susie's one of my PA girls. How you doing? Susie by the sea. Shermaine, good to see you by the way. Yeah, I got my uh, Let's give our daily shout out to Patricia Wakefield. We love you. We miss you. Somebody's playing basketball. Yeah, they're comfortable. I started digging it a little deeper into my drawer. Mm, she had some problem with her computer or something. And she's not real computer savvy. So it's very difficult for her to uh, navigate getting on, starting a new account and stuff. So. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I think just set up a new Gmail. You can have multiple ones and then just go set up a new YouTube. Something, I think something happened to her computer though. She tried to tech geeks or something and they just didn't do a job. I told her find a local 
you know, guy that'll just do it up for you, local person. Well, she watches, so we always shout her out. Oh. We always shout her out. I don't know, I think, I don't know what, I guess I'll have some peas tonight. Mm -hmm. I might have some uh, hot Korean noodle tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope she gets it resolved, but she's got a lot going on in life, so. Oh, thank you, Robin. Yeah, it's a sweatshirt. Nice, isn't it? I like it because it's nice and oversized. You can sit out here and... Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yep, thumbs up or appreciate. We've had a good stream so far. We hit it hard in the beginning. We didn't pull no punches. Yeah, I do too, Gling. Yeah, the crows are roosting. Yeah, sometimes you just want to be comfy. Well, thank you, Gling. We're in this transitional time. It could be like the mid-80s during the day, and then it's like, it gets cool. So, Bunny, are you going to do it up in New York City for uh, Halloween? It's perfectly comfortable. I, I like summer. Break out the bikinis, baby. really cool design too uh, Pocahontas that's cool <laughs> I doubt if you're too chunky listen to those crows hey Cobra John yes Cobra Don does it up. I've seen he's done some videos for decorating. Look, Robin, Chunky is in, honey. Everybody likes chicks with got meat on their bones. It's just, it's roosting time. There's like a, <clears throat> there's like a pecking order who gets the best spots. And some of them will chase the other ones out. Nice, family size Snyder's pretzels. Yeah, meaty is good. I'm meaty, there you go, Nino. Yeah. Yeah, there's a pecking order literally. I tell you guys it's like living in a Hitchcock movie. <laughs> uh, I try to keep too much meat off of my bones. Just the right amounts. Oh man. I don't know 
about to have. I know I feel like some peas tonight. Oh, I was gonna have hot soup. I was gonna have the uh, Korean noodle soup tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not into skinny. No, 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 no. You gotta fight back, honey. I've cut down the beer to one a night. Possums, raccoons, and chickens. That's pretty cool. Size 12 and proud. I think I'm at 12, 14. It's all over the map though. It's like 10, 10 to 14, <clears throat> depending on the cut. Ooh, uh, 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 uh. But I kind of stick out. Yeah, I try to stay in good shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about what's comfy. Like th this thing's big, but I love it because just I got a green one too that's real nice. And you can just sit out here in a fall night and be super comfortable, and you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, uh oh. Uh. <sighs> you like Asian stuff, you know? Yeah, Lucky Cat's the one that goes up and down, isn't it? Isn't that it? The thing that goes up and down? Is that the one? Ah, I do enjoy that beer of the night. Friday, I might treat myself to a little more on Friday. Mm -hmm. Waving hand gives you good luck. Yeah, I've seen lots. You can see that in my live stream in Chinatown in LA. That's the one. Back and forth. And, uh, Rod, we had to boot you out. It's English only at the table, dude. I wear over my doctor told me to lose it easier. Yeah, it's not easy to lose weight. Thing is, increase your exercise. Get your metabolism. Yeah, with the big eyes. Get your metabolism up. And you will start to lose weight. It's it's two things. It's metabolic rate and it's also calories. There's a guy, I know, Gling, I'm 64 years old. There's a guy, William Lease, a TCU punter. Guy does Iron Man. And I can't believe this guy. He'll go to a restaurant after riding his bike for three hours and swimming for an hour he'll eat a whole pizza he'll have three huge hamburgers and he'll have uh, a huge ice cream sundae and a cookie cookie sundae it's just if you're if you're exercising that much you can eat whatever the hell you want <sighs> well you're sweet there Ah, yep, 64. Will you still need me when I'm 64? Do, 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 still pumping it out in a bikini. Yeah, Phelps does the same thing. You can, you can just, I mean, I can't believe what this guy puts away. I'm like, wow, well, this guy, he'll he'll eat a whole large pizza because he's he's burning like 8,000 calories a day or something. Oh, well, thank you, Nino. Supplements and a lot of water intake. Lots and lots and lots of H2L. Yeah, I think keeping active, Darry D. Hey, Dave. I think keeping active is really a key. Uh, if you get up every day and if you're going to automatically hit a recliner or just turn on the TV, it's it's uh, you're going to clog up your arteries. And hey, Tater, how you doing, sweetie? It would, it would, it's a white XLT. Oh, that detector is about 13 years old if not more 
Now I want to say that detector is about 18 years old. And I think at the time I paid like 750 bucks for it. And it's paid for itself many, many times over. I'd like to get a more modern one. Oh, well, thank you, Gling. Yeah, I get up every morning, two huge cups of uh, water before I ever touch the coffee pot. And I don't, there's no snack food around here. You know, there's no uh, chips or... The only thing I have is my nightly bag of nuts. Yeah, Judy, stay busy, have a focus every day, have something that you want to accomplish every single day. And I think that's the key. And then that gives you the fulfillment loop of having accomplished something. And it's good. Alcohol fights many sicknesses. No, so, you know, I enjoy my I enjoy my beer. But I cut it down to one a night. I don't really miss it. And I just, I drink, uh, I have opened up the bottle of water. Ooh, 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 it's hard to drink water unless I'm hiking. I drink lots of you, which is not, yeah, well, Crow, a lot of that stuff still is, uh, is still a desiccant. You really gotta hit that morning H2O. Because you aspirate at night, you... Uh, you know, exhaling, your mouth is open. You're losing a lot of uh, moisture and stuff at night. Uh, I don't, Shelly. I really could use a more modern one. It's a little better. But White's is now part of the Fisher line, so I don't know. People talk about the Garrett ATX Pro. And you should get my metal detecting book on Amazon called Street Metal Detecting by Rosie O'Kelly. It was published in May of 2021. LaCroix, yeah. That's, that's basically all I do is urban metal detecting. Yeah, but they're not beaches in the sense that you could go to them, Robin. Only on the river. If you went into the water in the Pacific off here, you'd be dead of hypothermia in 15 minutes. Oh, well, thank you, Bill. Yeah, so check it out on Amazon. Make sure to leave me a nice review if you do. Thank you, Bill. Tell you about how to deal with police, how to deal with uh, people that might think that they own the front. Uh... Well, thank you, Nippy. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Yeah, I got a book out, Tater Toddies. It's uh, street metal detecting. Yeah, I, I got plenty of quarters, Robin. I, I I pick up stuff like crazy. I mean, look, just look at my YouTube video, my greatest metal detecting find sometime. <clears throat> just today, I put up the one in L.A. I got a nice Space Jam Michael Jordan coins worth about five bucks. And uh, a nice St. Jude medallion. And of course the usual amount of change. I like uh, Perrier. Yeah, it's called, uh, maybe one of my moderators can drop a link. It's called Street Metal Detecting. Uh, it's available on Amazon. And because I'll tell you, the good stuff is on the streets. It's not in the parks. The parks and stuff are hunted out. Well, that's what I do, Crow. I'm all over the place. I was the first one to be an urban metal detector. <laughs> Go where the people are. Yeah, thank you, Jody. decided to make use of my time during the pandemic and knock that out. That book. Yeah, save that link, Jody, just for the future. I might put that as part of the... Uh... 
Yeah, it's a fine for me, Shelly. I mean, I've got 1915 Panama Pacific Exhibition medallions that I got here in Santa Rosa. I mean, I've found gold chains. More silver than you can shake a stick at. Just look at my video called My Greatest Metal Detecting Finds. Yeah, thank you, Jody. Thank you, uh, Scottish. I mean, L.A. is, there's so much booty in the ground in L.A., it's unbelievable. Yeah, the thrill of the chase. But I've always had a, I guess I've been metal detecting about 18 years or so. And my white's metal detector is more than paid for itself. I might go out tomorrow afternoon, I don't know. I really enjoy it. Yeah, that was full of, uh, that was like a hobo stash. Yeah, Julie Army Mom won that. It wasn't even, I don't know what kind of tin it was. I don't think it was tuna, but. Yeah, I don't do the, the fake shit, Susie. Be real about what you find. You're rarely going to find something really cool, but you will find something interesting every time oh I don't know Magda it's uh, you know it is what it is honey uh, metal, the, the gold cross was breathtaking exactly that was a very fine filigree uh, cross so yeah the fake vids I can't stand because people plant shit and uh, it's like bullshit. <laughs> Joy, like I hoard the coins. <laughs> yeah, it's a book on Amazon, Susie. It's called Street Metal Detecting. I published it in May of 2021. Well, thank you, Darry D. That's so sweet of you. It ain't gone with the wind, but it hits the point. It tells you how to be a good street metal detector, how to deal with police, how to deal with neighbors, understanding where you should detect. I mean, there's some, uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover. In there. My greatest finds. Yeah, thank you, Magda. It's just something that I knocked out during the pandemic. No, I don't want to hear. Can I just? No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, metal detecting is great. And get yourself the confidence to get out on the streets. Uh, don't don't go to parks. Don't just, you know, all that stuff is hunted out. You want to understand how to properly metal detect in, uh, in urban areas and things. Because the more people that are around the more likely you are to find something good, especially in urban areas. I was in LA, not this time, but last time I got a 1912 half dollar. I gave it to Rich Life for road trips, but I found plenty of uh, really good date uh, Lincoln cents and things, so. Oh, that's okay, Magda. Oh no, Craig. Yeah, watch out for dog shit, exactly. Well, Magda, it ain't exactly a bestseller, I'm just, just saying, right? I just thought it would be cool to be published as an author. And Amazon makes it easy. They help you with cover design and all that. Mm, yeah, you, well, you won't have any problem doing that. Yeah, we can't give our stuff away exactly. But all the great treasures are in the, are in the suburban, urban areas, older homes. There's very few people that metal detect those areas. Those people, most people tend to go to parks, schools, but you know, not a lot of people are rattled in the streets because they're not comfortable street metal detecting. 
they feel like the eyes of the world are upon them, which they are, but you meet a lot of cool people. I've only had a couple negative experiences and the cops called, but it's always gone my way. No, I don't know about the men more. <laughs> no, I don't think so, Magda. This is a life to be forgotten. <laughs> uh, when I'm gone, I'd rather people just say that was really a wild chick, you know? I'll let you do the uh, unauthorized biography. Oh, I don't, I'm not popular, Magnum. Uh, I don't do drama, so I never pull the numbers of uh, people, but I feel good when I go to bed at night. Yeah, last time in L.A., Nina, I had little bugs coming out of the ground that were biting my lower leg. That was a little miserable. It was sweaty. And there's nothing worse than bugs when it's kind of sweaty, you know. And it, uh, Oh, well, thank you, Darry D. You're sweet. I do have good people here. It's pretty much a drama-free zone, so we sleep well at night. Not worrying about the channel being terminated. And I worry about some of those bugs, Ninos, because it's in areas with a lot of feces and a lot of whiz and a lot of homeless people. And... Oh, okay, Magda. Well, I mean, it's somebody of your intelligence and things, so it's kind of easy. You're like a gold mine of uh, opinion and learning. Yeah, I just, I can't, you know, I got to feel good when I go to bed at night, not, uh, not having torn somebody up. Oh, oh. And if I want to get my wild child on, I just go on TikTok. Do a little Dorito bikini upload. There's a grade called The Realist where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really great guy, Jay Hayes. Yeah, I wear the shorts, but uh, probably shouldn't, you know. Sometimes I get a little too much attention. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't celebrate the whole LGBTQ, XYZ uh, community because. I don't know anybody that uh, wears their sexuality on their sleeve. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not what we lead with in life. <laughs> Nino! <laughs> well, I'm an outcast. You'll never see a lot of trans people in here, Magda, because, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not all about, uh, you know, you have to live a whole life. It's, it's the whole flow of people in their 20s and 30s, and then they just disappear from social media and things. So, I mean, it's important. It's important to show a life when you're older that you can be transgendered and still, still have a big life, you know, and still, um, still be participating. But, a lot of gals, as soon as the looks go, they just, they disappear because that's what it was all about was autogynephilia and not being truly transgender, so. <clears throat> Motorcycle tough guy. Ooh. 
Susie, that was a motorcycle. <laughs> I love Jody. He's been a part of my channel for... What a doll, baby. She's put up with my bullshit. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Nino is a blast. You know how many come you know how many videos? Yeah, you are Magda. You do a good job. Do you know how many videos Nino's watched them? You know, she probably watched two thousand of my six thousand videos of which I used to have twelve thousand. Light of my life. One moonlight bay. Let's hope this baby stays up. Ooh. Yeah, Jody is very, very important to me. She's got a lot going on in her life. You never heard her complain about one damn thing. Soup tonight. That's off with some peas. We're gonna have some noodles, ramen. I rarely have it these days. With peas. Ooh, I'm just gonna heat up. Hey, Peach, how you doing? Nothing fancy, fancy. Rain so localized here. Janet texted me last night. She got caught out in a rainstorm. Half hour four, and I'm like, man, we didn't even have any rain here. The boss had to come and find her and Zoe. They were soaked to death out there. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I like this sweatshirt. Hi, Vicky. How are you? Because it's a really, it's a oversized. So when it's cold, and if I'm too hot, I just put the sleeves up. I got a green one too. I think Melissa at home with Melissa sent me. She sent me all the nuts. Love, love to love you, baby. I love to love you, baby. Hey, Fenice, how you doing, babe? There she is. The queen of the talk show circuit. How you doing, honey? Oh, that's all right now. I'm kind of sticking out the front end here. How you doing, honey? I'm not pregnant. Good to see you, sweetie. 
Hey Raptor, you getting excited for the Wisconsin game? I'm going to have a lot to say about Wisconsin-Ohio State tomorrow night. Do, 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 do. It's nice to see feathers. Hey, Ed. Mm. Have a nice hot Korean noodle. I still got uh, one more video to put up. It's, damn, the lighting was so bad in the <coughs> restaurant. It's like a blue, blue light. It's just terrible. The food just is crazy, insane looking. Uh, off road on a dirt bike. Can you imagine me bouncing? Boo, do, 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 do. And yes, I've still been in contact with Missy Jen every single day. And will be for life. I don't want no body. I got flotations built in. Oh, biggins. I said I want big ones, really big ones. It's gonna be some good eating tonight. Something a little different. Gotta get our spoon in. So do I, and I love mine. Nice, Darry D. Well, thank you, Shelly. Well, thank you, sweetie. I appreciate that. Please share on your social medias. Chances are your friends would enjoy it, too. up a Dorito bikini video on uh, TikTok. I got a whole group of them coming. But I also put up the Cecil Hotel TikTokers. Do do. <laughs> Scottish like is never boring. I could say the same thing about your life, Scottish. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? Do, 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 do. 
It had to be you. Doo -doo. I'm having some noodles tonight. Yeah, Sharon Sheridan, I think, sent me this lid. It's just a general purpose job. Uh, uh, uh. I'm having hot Korean noodles tonight and some peas. I had some Italian sausage. It's... Um, But I just didn't feel like, um, eating it, eating the sausage tonight. Man, I'm still using this stove. I haven't even started to use the one at Bird. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm not going to use the new one until this one totally craps out, dude. Oh, that's cooking good now. It's not often I have carbs. Do, 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 do. Uh, isn't that nice? It was sent to me. Keep the splatter down for bacon and things like that. And then Ms. Lulu sent me this, which is cool here. Sit that up a little bit. Love that. Ramen factory here in San Antonio. Yeah, there you go, Fattis. I could say the same about you. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. I haven't seen Joey D in a while. I hope he's okay. Sometimes he takes some time off. He gets tired of my bullshit, I think. This is going to be a mess. You got big ones? That's really cool. That's really cool. Oh, do you shake them? Korean noodles, man. Hot Korean noodles. Mm. It's good. I wanted something hot tonight. You know, during that heat spell, I had um, just a couple sam. I had sandwiches two nights. It's like a hot, um, it's a, like a hot seafood broth, but it's hotter than hell, P2E. It's got the heat turned up. <laughs> Simplified life. Well, I just don't do drama because it's the low-hanging fruit of life, so it's not good for the soul. <sighs> There's more to life than social media. Ugh. <sighs> yeah, it's really good. What was TMI? <laughs> for Ed, you mean? Damn. 
Amanda's not a Georgia fan. Very nice. Whoa! Ramen makes the world go round. Don't forget tomorrow night, Vegas Rosie returns. I don't have any milk, honey. I'm fine. I just have some water. Thank you, Raptor. It is um, ramen and frozen peas <coughs> oh Woo. damn I think my face is gonna get really red here uh, yeah I love the spider <laughs> that's funny me now I got two of these. Uh, Melissa sent me one. I can't remember who sent me this one. I'm very blessed with the uh, people. Tanya, this has cayenne pepper. It's a alley. It's the, uh, it's a private. It's the uh, road for the apartment, the duplexes down here. Uh, woo. Wow, my nose. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to go down to Koreatown. And... But damn, inside we were in the blue light. And I didn't get chicken in the bag, I got new stuff, but damn, under, you know how shitty food looks when it's under blue light? Called, it's still called Dutton Avenue back there. It's got still the their mailboxes are all out front. That's an apartment complex back there. Uh, Kmart is your saving store. Nice night tonight. Beautiful temperature. I don't know where in the hell bird went. Yeah, I missed our Kmart burn down. It was a terrible when they had only half the store with lights on and corporate must have said, God, that's the greatest thing that happened to Santa Rosa Fire. Hey, Rudolph. Oh, he went to get his laundry. Cool. You know, I don't know where the hell the cats are. Damn good idea. What's the heat is uh, cayenne pepper. The Koreans keep uh, heat simple. This is depressing. How about Jackson, Mississippi?
Now you got the governor's house. He has a whole water truck down in front of his place. I like pretty damn hot. But after a lot of heat, you can't even taste the food. It just is hot. Well, you know that their sewer and water system problem post flood. Eh, some places in Washington, D.C. are good. Some places like New York Avenue, you take your life in your hand. Georgetown's wonderful. You remember the movie The Exorcist? <clears throat> that was filmed in Georgetown. Yeah, I enjoy the food scene in Jackson. Oh, the occupants, okay. <laughs> now, I've never made peace out. <coughs> <coughs> Damn. <coughs> I think I aspirated a P. No, it's okay. Damn, man. I had heat overload. Damn, man, I like it hot. But not killer hot. Yeah, I'm okay. It's spicy as fuck. Pardon my language. <coughs> <laughs> what I like in Jackson is the food scene. Hot, hot, hot. What's up, Queenstown? Mm. Hope you're going to be on tomorrow night, Queenstown. I'm going to have a lot to say about the games coming up. <clears throat> There's some trap games in there. Oh. Good. We got like, I think we got eight bets going down this weekend. We're starting to swing a big line now. <clears throat> oh, I like, I like spicy. <clears throat> oh. It wasn't it just the heat built up, Buttercup Baby, and it wouldn't go down. Mm -hmm. They tell you how you can do your own self Heimlich. Just throw yourself over a chair or smash yourself into a wall. <clears throat> yeah, does she have a recipe for gourmet ramen? That's cool. <clears throat> Love Ina. I can't wait to make her lemon pound cake. It's always one of my best recipes. Mm. If I had bok choy or choy sum, it would be in here. Wow, Gling. Truck diving's my tour guide. Nice. People love their Crimson Tide down there. <clears throat> but you got Troy. South Alabama. Poutine. Hmm. Wow. I think you told me it has a dual capital Pretoria in Cape Town. I don't know.
disturbing or something. I don't know. <clears throat> Yeah, that's it, Buttercup, baby. <clears throat> uh, one of those dual capitals or something. I'm perfect though, honey. I'm good to go. <clears throat> I'm still shoveling it in. I had a little bit of a heat overload there. I like peppers. I like heat. Sichuan peppers, Cape Town, Johannesburg, and Bloom Flonten. Jayberg. Yeah, Mama Cass. I don't know, Susie. I thought she choked on a dick or something. I don't know. <clears throat> Your mileage may vary on that. Uh, oh, I'll do it up. <laughs> right Queenstown we got a weekend of football so grab your nuts and let's get ready to roll man the lines get sharper every week don't swallow I can't help the slurping. Jen Jen's not here. I don't think the cat would eat it. And the cats are smart. They see the shine shack's not open, so they're not around. <clears throat> We're going to test the Packers <clears throat> this Sunday. They're going to get their real test. Tomorrow's going to be a shootout of two old birds, two old quarterbacks in the NFL. The Aaron Rodgers post-game interview after last week. Is that how you doing, Aaron? Um, shoot, fuck, how do you think I'm doing? I'm an old man playing with young kids. candy balls. Wow, ready to give you an emergency tracheotomy. <clears throat> yeah, wow, buttercup. That's what you got to do. You got to find just the right place. <clears throat> and you got to have that, you got to have a knife and you got to have something like uh, be able to insert in there. Uh, 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 uh,
PC, you know, it, tell me what's noteworthy about you, man. It ain't the slurping. Man, dude, we can hear you five blocks away. That booming voice. <laughs> they remember you down at the Garden Suites Hotel down there. <clears throat> at the bar. <laughs> They're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. Tom Brady against Aaron Rodgers. <clears throat> No music. Friday and Sunday, uh, Susie. <clears throat> What's up, Bobby? Do, 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 do. Midnight at the Oasis. Uh, uh, how you doing, Bobby? I don't know, PC, uh, Brady always finds a way to pull a rabbit out of his ass. <laughs> Dog face. Good, Bobby. Oh, you haven't come over to spend breakfast or anything? can't believe Bobby's retired. <clears throat> I actually feel better about the Niners with uh, <clears throat> with Garoppolo in there than uh, two for Sam's. I got I got eight months to go. Nine months. <clears throat> yeah, PC, but so is Aaron Rodgers. <clears throat> yeah, I am, Nino. Aaron Rodgers just doesn't have what it takes to get to a Super Bowl. He'll be seeing big ass offensive linemen in corner <clears throat> corner blitzes <clears throat> blitzing off the edge the edge rush
Oh, Queenstown. I had that down in uh, Vegas. It was the <clears throat> Friday opening card. At, uh, it was the first race on a Friday at Saratoga. And they were having the two two mile with the fences, right? The short fences. Yeah, I did peach up. They had the short short fences. What my TikTok one? Yeah. And this horse they shipped over from Ireland was supposed to be great. I no, I don't. You know, and I drank the Kool Aid, and I bet on this horse. And the gate opened, the horse came out, and took about four steps and turned all the way around, facing the gate. Thing lost about five, thing lost about five lengths before it got its ass in gear. I was like, shit, yeah, June 21st. Jenna's doing good. She texted me she got caught in a rainstorm. It happens, Queenstown. Yeah, Bobby's family, he's in Santa Rosa. <clears throat> And I'm like, oh man. But the guy was game. He tried to catch up. Another three furlongs, another half mile, he would have probably won the race. But damn, man, who wants to see a horse turn around when they come out of the gate? I've had him jump the rail before, go into the pond and die. Just drown. Just go legs up. <clears throat> Everything that you can imagine that goes wrong will go wrong in a horse track. Oh, well, thank you, Peach. You're, you're sweet. Which one? TikTok or? TikTok's a little juicy, but. Somebody's got to carry the banner for the old broads. <clears throat> ooh, ooh. Yeah, I don't know what the hell it was, PC, but usually those horses that ship in from the UK and Ireland, they're so good on the, and France, they're so good on the turf. You gotta love them. <sighs> so I'll be back down to torture myself on the pony some more. Yeah, TikTok. <clears throat> TikTok's fun. You can spend a little bit of time. I mean, you know, it's it's simple. Not a lot of administrative shit to deal with. You just do it. Susie's like. Well, I'm helping somebody move. I hope to be about 80% done that tomorrow. And then I was hoping to maybe take off Sunday or Monday. I don't know if I'm going to anymore, Tio. Tell you the truth. just doesn't it just doesn't have the appeal to me at my age anymore yes peach it's up on I constantly put up new ones on TikTok. I did a corset video showing my bikini tuck about three weeks ago on YouTube shorty <coughs> The 
it. Right now I'm cutting down the beer and increasing the exercise. Oh, I did some heavy lifting. <laughs> I'm not a, uh, we'll still be fun to you. You never know. Oh, you get older, it's just not as much fun to live on the, you know, to live on the rough. just try to have a little more comfort in my life now <clears throat> plus I always find a way to stay cheap anyway where I go so just make sure your uh, surgeon has very good technique oh there's the lights cats must be here Baby socks. Yeah, it goes away over time, Buttercup. It's a polymer, dissolvable polymer or something. I'm all good. <laughs> Bobby's like, I'm. When I go down with Bobby in December, we can't stay in his shit bag. His thing, get me a good, get get us a good room. Yeah, but the scar is not much. No, I don't, North Carolina. I don't watch TV. Not really, Dave, because when you get older, your skin loses uh, elasticity. Cheers, Rudolph. There's the boss. So yeah, I lifted a shitload of boxes today. But I consider it good exercise. <clears throat> I got another day tomorrow. That was nice of you, boss, to pick up Janet and uh, Zoe. She was out in the pouring rain last night. And I told Janet, we didn't have any rain here. I was like, what the hell? So I'm kind of returning a favor. Omega. Oh, they're nice. I like black cats. Mailbox that had a shirt. On. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Yep, Dave Dickey's the boss. That's right. Yeah, black cats are, just have such good dispositions. Hey, Cheryl. They just, they always seem so mild-mannered to me. Space ghost, he's all black out. Well, I don't know about a cult, but they're just, they have very sweet dispositions. Yeah, we had a black cat when I was in high school, it was called Louie. We had a 
chocolate point Siamese called uh, Ginger. It was a male cat. How in the hell did we? It was a male cat. How the hell do we know? Velvet, yeah. What am I, a vet? <laughs> Glue trapped. <laughs> Buttercup, that's funny as hell. <laughs> All the trauma of the males. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Uh, that is funny. Yeah, that was a nice cat. It had a very distinctive meow. Shit, what the hell was that? Yeah, I don't know how to sex a cat. It's just, it's a cat, right? Yeah, it's, it, uh, Siamese was ginger. It was a male. Baby socks. Good night, fatties. Take care, babe. Thanks for coming by. And if you guys haven't hit the thumbs up button, please take a second to do so. It is appreciated. Beautiful weather night here. Just absolutely perfect out here tonight. I wouldn't do a chuck roast. Chuck roasts are a pain in the ass to deal with. I think it's ridiculous, T.O. Absolutely ridiculous. Teach them to read. Uh, okay, Ed. Hey Blackburn. Hey Rosie. Yeah, take care, slug bug. I got a package for you, Cam. Good night, Susie. Take care, honey. Great to see you. You all right, Fern? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little drunk. Just. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, baby socks was running around here. I got this for you. Uh, this is from uh, Bill Cody. I don't know. I don't open up your mail. Who is it from? It's from Bill Cody. C-O-D-Y, yeah. I don't know who that is. Yeah, you probably would. So, enjoy. <laughs> oh, wow, that's wonderful. Can you believe it? Thank you so much. Yep. Hey, what's up, the boss? I'm smoking your stuff right now, right? Like, <laughs> I love it, right? Uh, hey, nature woman. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. I'm not sure if Bill's still here, but uh, I'll pass that along. But he'll probably come over your chat if you're cool. Yeah, I'm always very respectful of other people's property and stuff.
Damn, I wonder if the pound's gonna be on parity with the dollar soon. Shit. It's gone down like a third world. Gone down like a Figueroa, Figueroa Street Ho. Yeah, I think I got one more day of moving, and then I think Saturday. Possibly Saturday, but anyway. Yeah, we got a bad. What's going on, Cheryl? Is this here hurricane going to hit? I'm in the middle of wine country, Peach. Right smack in the middle. Some of America's premier wine grapes. Upwards of a million dollars an acre. Damn, I gotta look into this hurricane deal. Headed for New England states and Atlanta. Oh, okay. Wow. I gotta think if that's gonna if that's gonna disrupt my football picks. Cause they go in any kind of weather, baby. Good night, Nino. Yeah, let me look at this. Yeah, we don't know a kilometer from a barometer here. Let's see. Let's uh, see. W, W, W. Web. Um, uh, Hurricane Fiona to brush Bermuda on its way to battering Atlanta, Canada. Y'all gonna get battered. Alexa, wake up. Mopo's gonna batter you up there. Uh, yeah, worst thing is a hurricane messing up the betting lines. You gotta think about that stuff. I'm pretty tired tonight, Vicky. I've been moving, schlepping stuff all day. I've been schlepping. Uh, sorry, boss. I forgot to look up the line on Kent State. <laughs> They're going to need it. <laughs> That's like when George is playing the Ohio State playing the Akron Zips or something. Yeah, Boss was the pride of the uh, Kent State archery team and drama club. into account with football. Definitely affected that Bears uh, Niners game. Yeah, 
Hong Kong got hammered too. Shanghai got hammered. God damn, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, good night, Julie. That's priceless shit right there. God, I'd pay to see that picture. Hmm. See, I go get my fingerprinting on October 5th. Yeah, there was some damage. I looked on the other side of town. I was surprised. I mean, I did have a curtain rod that came down in the uh, living room. Well, the Rancho sailed through the 1956 or uh, the 1969 earthquake. Kent State, the over 62. I'd like to see what the I'd like to see the uh, Penn State uh, points total for the game. Ten. <clears throat> it's called Murder Incorporated. I'll be talking tomorrow night, Ward. I hope you're here. Then I think next week I'm going to switch it to Wednesday. It was a 4.4, but the strange thing was the aftershock was bigger than the first one. It was a 4.5. We're in a very bad area here. We're on where Rogers Creek meets the San Andreas here. So I guess we'll just go down with our boots on here. You hear we had an earthquake and you don't see me for a couple days, well. Um, I love California Peach. I really love this state. Now, I'd spend part year maybe in Nevada, part year in uh, Hawaii, but, you know, that takes a uh, scratch, right? But I can dream, but I'm not going anywhere. I just, I like the weather too, climate too much here. It's dangerous as hell, but I like the weather. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I like NorCal. fascinated with dog shit let's see I never saw a guy so fascinated with dogs uh, toilet habits give a, give a couple more years you'll be cleaning up plenty down there let's see let's see what the, let's see if the odds let's see if anything's steaming here ah, let's see Go to Vegas Insiders football odds. Let us see. Well, that, uh, let's see. Things have, things have gotten interesting. West Virginia, two and a half. 
talk about that tomorrow night. Virginia, Syracuse, Boise State, Maryland Terrapins. That line is tightened up. Duke and Kansas, that's going to be an interest. That's, that might officially stamp Duke's arrival. Kent State, Golden Flashes. <laughs> Clemson, Wake Forest. UCLA and Colorado. Minnesota, Golden Gophers. The open line. These lines really changed. Wow, the Tennessee really opened three and a half, and now it's ten. Really? It's Mr. Z. We got a lot of action. We're rolling. What's up? When you're doing good, you got to press your bets. Uh, uh, yeah, I saw a picture of it. Boss's solution to old age with dogs is just get rid of them. Baby pe tomato face. Here's baby socks. They're running all around. Yeah, I love it. I ate at the bistro tonight. Nice. Was that at uh, the Orleans? Because I'm thinking about rolling down Sunday or Monday. Spending uh -huh. like, uh, I got to be back by the 5th. I got my fingerprinting. Hey, Peak Arbor. Yeah, well, be prepared. Really, uh... You know, Canada, Maritime Canada is not used to... Oh, the Mint Bistro. Awesome. I'm still in process, Tio. It's going to take at least 13 more weeks. I'm, next up is fingerprinting, and then you got to go in for an interview, and then you got to take a course, and then be told no. Yeah, Junior Jack is a good deal. Yeah, the mint is really good. It's an amazing restaurant, but we got to get some. We got to dig out some more stuff, Mister Z. So I will be on about 8.30 tomorrow night, Mr. Z, if you're in the chat. We'll talk about uh, what lines are out of whack. And, uh, we even bet our first pro game this weekend. Coming up. I couldn't resist that game. Oh, good, Pete Carver. You're all set then. <laughs> uh, uh, well, Amanda, 
I don't think those combo meals are such a bargain anymore. Yeah, Mr. Z, I need another week or so of pool time and I'll be good for the season. Good night, Buttercup Baby. Thanks for coming in tonight. All the best to you. Amanda's team's doing Georgia Tech at the U University of Central Florida Knights and set, yeah, Georgia Tech's a 17 point dog. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Some real dogs of war out there. Uh, yeah, don't be mad at us. We made some money on uh, Old Miss against Georgia Tech last weekend. <laughs> Yeah, they were pretty interesting, P. Carver. Not my best day of metal detecting, but not my worst day. Not my first pick of a neighborhood, but I got a late start that day. Plus, I, I had some little bugs that came out of the ground were biting my ankles. And stuff. I don't know what the hell it was. And plus, there's so much urine and feces. Getting yourself your own rosy barbecue. What does that mean, Dave? What is this here, Dave? I just had eggplant parmesan. I've made pizzas, baked bread, made a layer cake. Um, hello. I gotta I think I gotta get some gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we doubled the return. I hope we can do it again. Yeah, I think so, I think so too, Amanda. But uh, yeah. the book doesn't think so. I got some real issues with the with the books this weekend. Yeah, I, I do this one here. I've had this one for years. Master Forge, I replaced the uh, propane tubes in it instead of having to buy a new one. Yeah, I have no favorites, Mr. Z, you know, so we're, we're, if you're going good, that's the time you should press your bets, so. We spread some action around. Well, because Wake Forest is a top 20 team, so. It's right here. Who can afford the air, yeah, really, Julie? Mm. Yeah, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Hey, KJ. I've, we got a, it, there's a couple trap games out there, and it goes without saying, every week deeper you go into the season, the lines become sharper, and it's you've already picked the low-hanging fruit. Hey, EJ. Those first three weeks of the season are just gifts. Some of them we should have damn sight won too. The odd fumble or pick six. It's like Mr. Z and I, we, we had Troy against App State and we won the bet because Troy covered, but Damn, they should have won the game, but this App State 
guy quarterback throws up a Hail Mary and then Dick catches it. But Troy State was the better team. So you won't change my mind just because App State won the game. Yeah, it got dicey. We haven't really had to sweat any, though, Mr. Z, you know. It's been, uh, you know, if they go bad, they go bad early. Like BYU in Oregon. That was a class, that was a clusterfuck. Do, 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 yeah, it's like a 7-5. Nice thing about our stuff is when it goes bad, it goes bad early. Like when I clicked on that Alabama-Texas game, and it was like 10 to 10 in the first quarter, I'm like, we're dead, man, that's it. I expected to see 21 to 3 or something, it's done. Stick a fork in this, we're done. Some of these book lines really have me scratching my head. Yeah, we, when you know you're going to lose early, it just... Right? Better than just sitting there at the end sweating it out like nobody's business. But there's definitely some trap games out there. <sighs> oh, it's nice to sit down. I'm just resting my legs from today. Stubby, fat legs, working, carrying, carrying like a horse. Do 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 Mr. Z ate at the uh, mint, the mint bistro, that uh, Indian food. Well, this person helped me a few times, covered me on some stuff, T.O., so I felt that I should have returned the favor. Plan to get that soon, EJ. As soon as, uh, as soon as my place has it in, I'm still waiting. I want to get the flu shot and that. Staying on top of that. P. Carver, did you see the review of the uh, Mint Bistro in Vegas?
I think so, Amanda. Look at the review I did. It's probably the most uh, probably the most amazing Indian food I ever had in my life. Really, really, really good. Uh, yeah, you too, Amanda. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for coming in tonight. Always good to have you in the chat. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, check that out, P. Carver. I believe that that's a link that Cheryl posted to the Mint um, Indian Bistro video. They, they had all this automation, robot running around. It was really cool. It's definitely a restaurant of the future. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, you got to wait 120 days. That's what you got to do. bit of a breeze tonight feels good beautiful weather huh bird can't beat late September tomorrow's the first day of uh, fall the 22nd 21st tomorrow 22nd I guess yeah 22nd the hell of a summer huh and uh, Oh, day. It's almost a year since Bird's been here. But we're very lucky because we didn't really get no really extreme weather. Just that, just that week in early September, there was a, August, it was a killer. Late August, remember that? 115, 113, that bullshit. Yeah, it's going to be great pool weather, so I'm thinking Sunday or Monday, Mr. Z, so if you want to, um, I'll probably come down and stay like seven or eight days. We can do some cooking, all kinds of shit. Good night, Jerry. Thank you. I'm going to try. I, I've had a little time to drop back and punt on the horse racing, so I'm going to have another go at that. And I've started to, um, Kelly asked me to get involved in hockey, so I previewed the uh, hockey, NHL hockey. So I'm going to try to really drill down and get the education. I'm going to skip pro basketball. I'm going to drill down on the college game. So you're going to really be busy, Mr. Z. <laughs> Mr. Z, now he's like, if we're making money, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> it's like, you start losing, yeah, get up some clean underwear, yeah. That's it, exactly. So I'll keep you posted, you know what's going on. 
I got to get through the weekend. I got some more work to do. So I don't know. I'm kind of delayed. Yeah, you know a little bit of hockey, and I'm putting the Knights right up there in my initial. I put them in the top four. Go Commando. College basketball. It's going to take me a while to get comfortable with the lines in there. Yeah, I love October. I love November. And I love December. I don't like January, February, or March. Yeah, preseason. So I'm really kind of drilling down on that. And they've also, last year they were dealing with a lot of injuries, so. I have very high hopes they'll be to the final four. So, I got a lot of work to do in that regard. And I'd like to think we could go to a game or something peel off a couple tickets no I don't I think it's something else Craig I think I've got a pipe down there that's I turned I don't I've turned the well off for a while this late in the season yeah well that it's I don't dislike February Gling but just the you know, I'm all about sun and bikinis, and 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 by February, March, I'm like, oh, you know, it's just gray skies and just atmospheric rivers of rain. So I got nothing against the month of uh, I got nothing against the month of um, February. Trust me, Glenn. Well, that's good. Cheryl will be our Western, our Western Division hockey analyst for the Vancouver Canucks. Nice. RV Debs is born on October 31st. Yeah, just it's not my favorite. You know, come come April, I start to feel good, and then I got to deal with the allergies in May and June. But I, I got nothing against any month. But I particularly like October, November, and uh, December. The, especially the period between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I love that period. Ruins your plans. It's usually the hottest day of the year on my birth. It's usually hot as hell June 21st. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> Lose a bunch, make a little late too late push for playoffs and miss as usual. Surprisingly, I did, my initial analysis didn't put much stock on the Montreal Canadiens. I put Toronto Maple Leaves in the upper third of. Uh, should be okay, Craig. Should be okay. Should be a simple fix. Blackbird filled up the last hole in the back for me that I dug, so. Thank you, Bird. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't resist that day labor work. <laughs> yeah. So my job is pretty much done. So we, where are you moving on to? I don't know. I think Friday is pretty much it for me here. You know. Yeah. They already have a couple helpers. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but 
Well, I think that you would be a far superior to whatever the hell's you over there. You guys are my helpers, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any. I think you'll bounce fine, bird. So I'm not worried about that. We're watching these old cartoons I've never seen before. Yeah, I heard. I kind of thought you were listening to that. And all this weird stuff. Like I, I thought your I thought your company was going to put you on another uh, project or something. Well, I'm hoping. Yeah, I think it'll. Yeah, it's it with your work ethic. I can't imagine him not doing that. So. Plus, there's like 15 other job sites. Or <laughs> it is growing. Yeah, I think. Term. If I, you know, if I need work, I think I can find something. <laughs> No. Yeah, leaves begin to change and all that, so I gotta wait till all the leaves are down and then I gotta empty the gutters out around here and do all that. So I'm a Gemini Cancer Gling. Right on the cusp. Well, they would be foolish if they didn't pick up Blackbird for a site. We're gonna we're gonna watch T V and veg out. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it closed down too, guys. So thank you for a great right, night night, tonight. Yeah, good night, Blackbird. Um, I'm going to um, go ahead and close it out tonight. Wish you all a great night. Great four hours here. Uh, as usual, to my wonderful moderators, Jody was here, Scottish was here. I know um, Shemay has been here. Cheryl came in. Thank you so much. Vicki, I hope you're doing okay, honey. I never hear from you anymore. Which means you're not dreaming about me anymore. You're not touching yourself anymore. So, <laughs> Mr. Z, I'll let you know. Boss and Janet, good night, everybody. Have a great win. Thank you so much, Glenn. Good to see you, Sarah Bear. Angus Kisses, I wish you pain-free. What a wonderful lady. And uh, guys, we will see you um, tomorrow. Don't forget, tomorrow night will be the last Thursday night for Vegas Rosie. I'll be switching that to Wednesday night because we're scheduling more football games for Thursday and Friday. So I will see you all tomorrow. Don't forget to check the vids. Ooh.